Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome back to the video on the Conqueror's Blade. It has certainly been a week or two since we've actually had a video. And since we are finally sort of getting a much needed upcoming uh, nerf to the Yanyadao Warders, the, the, the new tier 5 cavalry, I thought I might as well just drag them out one last time for one last sort of round of slight OPness before they get sort of a much needed nerf. So yeah, I just thought we'd have a little bit of a little bit of a rampage around with them really. Nothing particularly changed much since we last did a video on them, running basically down the um, same veterancy line. I think the only addition is probably the crowd control doctrine that we've been able to add in. They added introduced that through an event, which basically means the unit gets uh, CC immunity while using Dread Unleashed, which is really nice, basically makes the ability pretty much unstoppable unless you charge into pikes. Other than that, usual stuff, um, Siege Fighter Doctrine, um, an upgraded Breakthrough Doctrine, essentially this is, the extra slashing damage, and a little bit of just extra base slashing damage as well. Anyway, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can flatten with our new cavalry. So I've said before that I'm really not much of a cavalry player. I'm much happier with melee infantry. But that is what kind of makes this unit quite so overpowered. It's the fact that even pretty poor cavalry players like me can still do really well with them because their skill limit is really low. They're really, really easy to use well. So we're kicking this off on, on a border fort. Coming back round, enemies starting to pressure our friendly supply point. Now we've obviously got some um, uh, enemy pikes around, but actually they're just pike militia. So we can easily swing back round, activate the unit. And it, it really just flattens them in seconds. Okay, they're a pretty low tier unit. Just killed them nice and quickly though, picks us up 20 kills. Almost instantly. We come back, I'm still sort of skirting around the edges. Don't quite managed to get that uh, that hero there, which was slightly annoying. But that's the other thing. If you look at the cooldown on their main um, Dread Unleashed ability, it's so short. And then we get a nice clump. Over here we've got sort of four or five enemy heroes, Imperial Shields, Archers behind. Straight in, immediately a hero kill. Immediately completely flattens the unit of Imperial Shields and ends up in the archers behind. And we can just do so much damage. And look, a Dread Unleashed is ready again, which grabs us another hero kill, then the third. And we've completely wiped the whole lot for pretty minimal losses. It's just kind of crazy how much damage you can do. Unless you're coming up against Fortebrecio, really this unit can absolutely dominate blobs like that. Next up, move over to a little bit of Curric Castle, where I'm pretty slow in actually noticing the B-point is being capped. When I do, I start to head that way, but I'm actually not going to make it there in time. Come around the corner, got some paladins in front of us, thinking, hmm, okay, quite a nice target. They actually go for the charge, and I'm actually a bit late on getting my Dread Unleashed built up, so I just activate it early. Obviously, it doesn't do as much damage as if you manage to get it fully charged, but... Sometimes timing is just more important than maximum damage and actually we still pick up, you know, the vast majority of the kills on that Paladin unit and it's still really effective. Next up, we come around the corner, got some Halberdiers here. I'm not sure if the Halbs will have Sergeants, but they made the mistake of actually moving. If they just stayed in Phalanx, it would have been a lot more effective, but we're really able to cut them down, kill the unit pretty quickly with fairly minimal losses, grab the hero kill and keep going. So yeah, as I was saying, you know, it's nice to build up the full charge on this unit, but, you know, sometimes you just time it wrong. Quite often I end up timing it wrong and you just activate with what you've got. So we come around the corner to base, again, almost fully charged there, straight into the back of these grey hair garrison and into the Axe Raiders. And there's some Iron Reapers in there as well, I think. And we just start sort of laying about, really. It's just so brutal, this unit. I, I don't feel like... I'm even playing it very well in this situation, and yet you're still picking up loads of kills. We end up with like about 100 kills from this one match from you know the start of that B point, and they just completely massacre everything. And even as the unit gets diminished, they're still brutally effective, as we can just sort of go around and really basically clear out the push on the base point, and it just really kills everything. And that's where I find them just to be such a dominant unit. And so yeah, I think it's definitely a good thing they are getting a little bit of a nerf. Talking about burst damage, a little bit of a clip um, over on Wycat Fork. Push in, a bang, straight through the hero, straight through a full unit of Imperial Shields, and it pretty well wipes the full unit. And even the pikes that are set up in the tunnel, it's not really much of a problem. Pushes straight through them, obliterates them, and grabs a hero kill on the other side as well. The only thing that could really seem to stop this unit is itself. 
<laughs> when you run into another unit of Yandidao cavalry, then they kill you fairly effectively. And finally, we end up on a little bit of Riverlands. I actually kind of like this map. But anyway, um, it's been kind of an interesting unit to play. I am kind of pleased, I think, that it's getting a little bit of a nerf. It's, you know, it is very fun to play, of course, as I just charge headlong into a trim. Good job, Evo. But um, it is kind of pretty dominant, and it's got a really low skill gap. You know, with skills that are on a really short cooldown. The fact they added in that CC um, removal doctrine as well wasn't perhaps a great move. And a few other things like that, which, which mean it kind of, it needs a little bit of a nerf to make it a little bit more uh, friendly to other players. Perhaps is a good way of putting it. But anyway, I have had a lot of fun playing it as a unit. As we uh, carry it on through, <laughs> getting stuck into a little bit of a behind enemy lines as I was chasing down that guy down there. But as we come around the corner, I get a little bit hedged in because we've got enemy pikes on the right hand side. And then basically end up running into some enemy calf of my own. But just to end it off, there's more players who wasn't quite paying enough attention. And we could sneak up behind him and kill him and his artillery. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conqueror's Blade content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.